Good evening, Wisconsinites. Welcome, and thank you for tuning in this evening. I'm Tony Evers, and I'm incredibly proud to be the 46th governor of the great state of Wisconsin and to deliver my 2021 State of the State Address to you tonight. Good evening, Wisconsinites. Wisconsin Constitution Welcome, and thank requires you for tuning in this evening. Year, the governor I'm Tony Evers, and I'm incredibly proud to be now, the 46th tonight governor is probably of the great first state time of in our state's history and to deliver my 2021 State of the State, of the state, state Address, address to you virtually tonight. And without a the Wisconsin live audience. Constitution requires that, means that each good year the governor bad communicate the, the bad news of our is state. there won't be any applause now, or tonight is here probably tonight. the first time in our but state's good history news a governor has means delivered tonight's speech a state of the state a address a lot virtually less time. And, and without a live watching audience. at home you can be that as means there's as you good news and comfort of your cup. The bad news is there won't be any applause or booze here tonight. Some individual the good news is that means tonight's speech first person a a lot less time. And ben since worked you're in my watching office, at home, you can be with as rowdy me as everywhere I went of your during country. my first two years as governor. To begin tonight, you've seen me I'd out like and about. There's a good chance Ben was by my side here with us. Might have even talked to him. First person's name and is Ben Bell. A good portion of this Ben worked in my office. Ben was also in my circle of five everywhere I went during my first two years as governor. If you've seen me out and about, there's a good chance Ben was driving always to be might have even talked to him. Word. And Indeed, for a good concerns. portion of this pandemic, we sure wish he could be with us here tonight. Five until we, we miss lost him, him every day this past summer. Also not with my us tonight. Team and I more think of five thousand Wisconsin always to die more like due to COVID-19. COVID-19. Word. Indeed, and, and firefighters, service. healthcare workers, we sure wish he could be with us here tonight. Entrepreneurs, we miss him every day. Community pillars, students, also veterans, not with us tonight. Here more than five thousand Wisconsinites who have died Packers, due to COVID-19. And Bucks fans. They were firefighters, their moms and dads, healthcare workers, brothers and sisters, nuns, educators, and entrepreneurs, and they are community loved pillars and students, veterans, volunteers. So tonight, I'd like watchers, to dedicate this address to those who've and Packers lost this year and, Bucks and the families, the sons and their daughters, moms and dads, moms and dads brothers and sisters, and friends and friends and coworkers, and neighbors. And they are left loved. And who, on top of everything many. else this past year, so tonight I'd like to dedicate this address to those who've, of who we've lost, lost this year. And, and I'd ask you to join me briefly in a moment of silence and dads, to honor the lives of these friends, friends and neighbors left behind, who, on top of everything else this past year, have had to mourn the loss of someone they love. And I'd ask you to join me briefly Thank in you. a moment of silence to honor the lives of these As I stood before you and delivered my second state of the state address last year, the world and our state looked much different than it does now. We are coming off a successful year, making a down payment on our priorities like fully funding our public schools. As I stood before Fixing you and delivered my second and state of the state address last year, more accessible and affordable. We put $330 million in general school aids, the largest in more than a decade, and funded a $97 million increase for special education, the largest ever. We provided more than $465 million in new funding for our local roads, highways, and transit aids. And even though my efforts to expand health care were rejected by the Republicans, we made critical investments in improving mental health treatment supporting our direct care workforce and increasing funding for our rural health care providers. So we began 2020 with our sights set high. We are announcing a three-pronged plan to address our dairy crisis and support rural communities across our state. We are looking ahead to redistricting on the horizon, creating the People's Maps Commission to draw our state's next maps after the 2020 census and ensure that People choose their elected officials, not the other way around. We're pushing to return our state's commitment to two-thirds funding for our kids and our schools, and we are going to increase aid to our most rural school districts while providing $130 million towards reducing property taxes through equalization aid. Then things changed overnight. We were going about our daily lives when a novel coronavirus hit, and we had to take urgent, necessary steps to prevent the COVID-19 pandemic from spreading. Suddenly, states and countries were asking folks to shelter in place. Kids and educators were learning and teaching from their kitchen tables, and so many began working from home. And those that weren't 
were worried about what this virus might mean for them if they went to work each day. When I delivered my last State of the State address, no one could have predicted the rest of the year would go quite like it did. What we now know about 2020 is that it was among the most unrelenting years many of us have ever experienced. If someone had said then that our special sessions to address our dairy crisis and provide funding for our schools and property tax relief would be met with in action, if someone had said then, after visiting all 72 counties my first year in office, last year we'd only be visiting each other virtually and learning to use a thing called Zoom. If someone had said then that in a year's time, we'd lost more than 5,000 of our family members, friends, and neighbors due to the worst public health crisis in a century, we wouldn't have believed them. I said then that the year would challenge the depth of our empathy and the strength of our selflessness, and it did, but in more and different ways than we could have ever imagined. Just take a look. First tonight, I'm calling a special session of the legislature next week to take up legislation to invest in our farmers, agriculture industries, and our rural communities. Tony Evers wants to put $250 million into our state's education. As Amy Reid shows us, legislative leaders have other plans for that money. It is a tragedy for Milwaukee, yes, but it is a tragedy for the entire state of Wisconsin. Wisconsin has its first confirmed case of the coronavirus. Today, I have declared a public health emergency to address the outbreak. Tony Evers says all K-12 schools statewide will close beginning next Wednesday. And the Wisconsin State Fair is also canceled this year, which is their first cancellation since 1945. Lawmakers didn't even show up today knowing the end result. Republican leaders quickly decided they wouldn't take up the governor's request, arguing the election should and can safely happen on Tuesday. Stop playing politics with our lives. You know, that's what I'm feeling. This order is effective immediately. Safer at home is struck down by the state Supreme Court. In this one fell swoop, four judges who uh, have thrown our state into chaos. This morning, another American city is rocked by outrage over the police shooting of a black man. I lost my cousin to police brutality in Chicago. I know how this feels. But unfortunately, Wisconsin is in a much different and more dire place today. Wisconsin just saw the five deadliest days of the pandemic so far. Republicans have shown no indication that they will move on. 19 people have died since Monday. Do you feel any responsibility for the mess and, frankly, the, the crisis that this state is facing now? Shepard, unfortunately, the state of Wisconsin is now in crisis mode. All hospitals across the state are either at or nearing capacity. N95 masks do not absorb tears when you are at a bedside um, removing somebody from a BiPAP. Please help us save lives. Thank you. It's tempting to look back and see a year rife with heartbreak, setbacks, and loss, because it was. From our healthcare workers to our students, Wisconsinites have been stretched to the limit making immeasurable sacrifices for our neighbors, for our families, for our loved ones, and I know so many are tired. Our statewide efforts to contain this virus were met with costly litigation and resistance nearly every step of the way. We were grateful to be able to invest nearly $2 billion in our state's response. We distributed more than 26 million pieces of PPE and sanitizing supplies to hospitals, long-term care facilities, veterans' homes, and frontline workers. We provided more than $370 million to help stabilize our economy and support nearly 53,000 of our small businesses, more than 15,000 farms, and our lodging, hospitality, and tourism industries. We invested more than $200 million in helping communities across Wisconsin recover. But we know we have a long way to go to get our economy back on track. And unfortunately, many of the challenges of 2020 will no doubt carry into this new year. But as we reflect on these challenges, 
the magnitude of what this past year presented us and the work we did together to prepare, adapt, and respond, let us also remember to grant ourselves grace, to permit ourselves perspective, to recognize our own resilience. Yes, our reverence and our patience and our tolerance have been tested by times and by each other. Yes, sometimes doing what's best and what is right lost out to elected officials who chose politics and political interests instead. Yes, there were moments where we could have offered a greater empathy, more humility, and better community than what we gave to those who, too, were carrying the burden of the last year. But despite all of this, we also managed to find the strength in the struggles we shared. We found faith in the kindness of strangers and who brought food and groceries to those who couldn't leave their homes. Packing meals for kids so that they wouldn't go hungry, even if they weren't in school. Sewing and donating masks for others who couldn't afford their own. We found resolve in the voices of thousands, marching and echoing the call and repeat of generations and demand of the equity and justice we promised and have not yet delivered. We found perseverance in our farmers, growers, and farm workers, and producers who kept working to make sure we kept food on our table. In our Main Street businesses and restaurants who reimagined and retooled to keep customers and their communities safe. In the men and women of our Wisconsin National Guard who have heeded the call to serve time and again from our statewide testing to working the polls during what has been the longest guard activation in our history. We found courage in the hospital rooms and hallways and the doctors and nurses and healthcare workers who've braced themselves on the way to work and walked through the door anyway, who've comforted our loved ones when we couldn't, who even today have never stopped showing up for us. This past year asked a lot of us, and we've asked a lot of one another. But when we did, we found that the strength of our state is in what we're willing to face together, what we're willing to do for each other, especially when our neighbors need us the most. Increased coronavirus testing will roll out this week across the state. Governor Evers' goal is to reach 85,000 tests a week. Governor Evers is calling on the legislature to take up a package of criminal justice reforms they announced following George Floyd's death. made history by boycotting a game just before tip-off. Using our platforms for good and, and to inspire change. Stand. I understand what these young people doing out here. Yeah. It's a great thing. The governor told me today he wanted to thank the people of Wisconsin for the sacrifices that they have made during this quarantine. You need to figure out what you're fighting for and keep that at the forefront. So this community, these, these patients, these families that are being affected by this, that's what I'm fighting for. Changing the world is not hyperbolic. It's not some far off idea. And we can create that society that is open, inclusive, welcoming, inviting. To everybody. He said it's working. We are headed in the right direction. I know this year has been extremely difficult, and I know good news is hard to come by. So tonight, we must also offer our neighbors the promise of a better tomorrow, a promise that each of us must play a part in delivering by doing everything we can. We love our future and we don't want to mess it up. We want to help other people give their lives good. Although the year is behind us, the remnants and hardship of 2020 remain. I know folks are eager to put this virus in the past. Frankly, I am too. I know so many are ready to get vaccinated and get back to the life we knew it. And we're working to distribute the vaccine doses as quickly and as fairly as we can. And while Congress recently provided additional resources to help fa support families and our state's response, we know it will likely not be enough to continue fighting this virus until we're through distributing the vaccine. There's always more work to do, and just as we have this past year, we're going to get it done. 
Now, two years into my first term as governor, we're not going to slow down. In fact, we're just getting started. Our forebearers gave us a mandate to go forward, and we have, as we must. But forward was a challenge to us then, just as it is here today, not to move for movement's sake. In this state, forward isn't a metric of those who move the fastest. It's a measure of the strides we make when we all go together. As this past year has underscored, our course over the past decade has proven unsteady and uneven. For years, our state has plowed ahead unencumbered by the hopes of those we might leave behind. We are reminded now that in the fight for progress and prosperity, we each share responsibility. And it begins with broadband. This pandemic has underscored and in some ways exacerbated the digital divide that exists across our state. This pandemic has shown us firsthand that lack of access to high-speed internet continues to be a setback for kids, families, and businesses across our state. Students, educators, and schools making the shift to virtual learning were faced with a lack of access or unreliable connections that made it difficult to teach, engage, and learn. Folks trying to stay healthy and access basic health care services had trouble using telemedicine or other alternatives to visit with their doctor when they couldn't go in person. And businesses working to adapt and provide online ordering or payment options didn't have the technological tools or elect connectivity in their area. And in some communities, consumers didn't have the internet connection to take advantage, even if they could have. According to the FCC, more than 430,000 people who make up 25% of our state's rural population lack access to high-speed internet. Our state ranks 36th in the country for accessibility in rural areas. Earlier this year, our Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation released its Wisconsin Tomorrow Report. It highlighted broadband as one of three priorities to begin our economic recovery, saying this, fixing broadband in Wisconsin is not a moonshot. It's not insurmountable. But it is critical to economic development and recovery and must happen now. So tonight, I'm excited to declare 2021 the year of broadband access. I'm proud that my first biennial budget invested $54 million into broadband across our state, the largest state investment in broadband in our state's history. Well, not to be outdone, we're going to do it again in this budget, except this time we're going to nearly quadruple it. My 2021-23 biennial budget will invest nearly $200 million over the biennium into broadband. That's five times the amount invested in the 2013, 2015, and 2017 budgets combined. It's 2021, folks. Having access to high-speed internet is no longer a luxury. It's a necessity. Every Wisconsinite across our state should have access to reliable, high-speed internet Period. Now, lack of broadband access isn't the only issue this pandemic brought to the forefront this past year. The last two months of the year, I worked with Republican leaders on a COVID compromise. And I called on the legislature to pass that compromise as the very first bill this session and to send it to my desk without delay. But tonight, I'd like to talk about the very second bill that should be passed by the legislature this session. And that's a bill to fix our broken unemployment system. Since the beginning of this pandemic, we saw an unprecedented influx of unemployment claims. It exceeded the number of claims even during the Great Recession. To put it in perspective, over the course of four years from 2016 through 2019, the Department of Workforce Development handled 7.2 million claims. Well, since March, the DWD received 8.8 .8 million claims alone, 1.6 million more claims than the four previous years combined. So as we saw a massive number of new incoming claims, we got to work 
reassigning state employees from other divisions or agencies and hiring and contracting new workers. We brought our staffing up from about 500 employees in our unemployment insurance division to more than 1,800 to answer phone calls, process claims, and follow up with folks who had applied for benefits. And during that time, the DWD paid nearly 600,000 claimants more than $4.6 billion in unemployment insurance benefits to folks across our state. But the bottom line is that our unemployment system isn't designed to handle the massive numbers of modern days, which has contributed to delay in processing claims, required more time to implement new federal programs, and made it harder to get benefits out the door. Our antiquated system isn't quite as old as I am, but it's been around since Richard Nixon was president. This system isn't new, and these problems aren't either. And Republicans and Democrats alike are to blame. The fact of the matter is, is that previous administrations and more than a decade's worth of legislators have known this system was outdated and couldn't handle an economic crisis like the one this pandemic presented. And they never took the time to fix it. And to make matters worse, the legislature has spent the last decade passing laws deliberately making it even harder for people to access these critical supports when they need it the most, exacerbating the problems with our already outdated system. This past year brought to bear the inaction of my predecessors and members of this and previous legislatures who avoided their responsibility and duty for far too long. Well, I'll tell you this, it's gone on long enough. It ends tonight. I'm announcing today I will be calling a special session of the legislature to take up a plan to modernize our unemployment system and help ensure nothing like this happens to the people of Wisconsin again. We know that replacing the system will take years. That's why it should have been done sooner. But it's also why we don't have another moment to waste. No politics, no posturing, Send me the bill and let's just get it done. And I want to make myself clear, the legislature continues to ignore this problem. They gavel in and gavel, gavel out like they've done before. They leave this problem for another administration, another generation. The people of the state will hold, hold them accountable at the ballot box. Because this year, we're also gonna fix another problem that's plagued our state for more than a decade, our gerrymandered maps. Last year, during my State of the State address, I announced I would be creating the People's Maps Commission, a nonpartisan redistricting committee of Wisconsinites from each congressional district who would draw fair, impartial maps based on the 2020 census. So for the past several months, the People's Maps Commission selected by a panel of three retired judges has gotten to work. They're hosting virtual hearings in every congressional district to hear feedback and input from people across our state to begin drawing the people's maps. Now, Republicans in the legislature said right away they'd ignore any maps the commission created. And that's not a surprise given that in 2011, this legislature hired private attorneys to draw our maps in secret and behind closed doors. And because the legislature wrote themselves out of Wisconsin public records law, they were able to destroy many of the public records from that process. Well, I believe, and I know many of you at home do, that people should get to choose their elected officials, not the other way around. Wisconsinites don't want maps that favor any political candidate or party. We just want maps where either candidate can win. Folks, that's just common sense. So tonight, I'm announcing that my biennial budget is going to make sure that the legislature draws our maps in the light of day, in the public eye, and with public input by re requiring public meetings for map drawing process. And that's why we're also going to prevent the legislature from destroying records from the map drawing process because the people of our state deserve to know how these maps are drawn and by whom. 
And finally, and most importantly, we are going to require the legislature to take up the people's maps, which will be drawn not by any political party or high paid consultants, but by the people of our state. Folks, it's time we look to the people, not politicians, to draw maps that are fair and impartial. Now, make no mistake, I do not underestimate the challenges that this new year may bring or the grief we're still grappling with, the ramifications we've yet to fully realize, the new problems that may arise still this year. But as sure as we will face struggles, we'll take them on together. We've made it through a difficult year, folks, and while it was discouraging, we aren't defeated. While it was trying, we're tough. Wisconsin, we've never been known for being timid, and we're sure not going to start today. Our people, our state, and our democracy have withstood tests before, and we will again answer the call to go forward unfazed. Be well, be healthy, and stay safe. Let's get to work. Let's move forward together. Thank you, and on Wisconsin. UW Marching Band, take it away.